Welcome to the Mass River Golf Club Kitchen. Here we are again for one of Chef Most Cooking Classes. Today we're going to make one of our fall favorites, braised short ribs. Here we have a uh, bone-in short rib. You can see they're very well marbled. And like always, we have them on a, a towel in order to uh, dry them so we can sear them off. So we're going to light the stove. These you can usually find in your local supermarket, whether with a bone or even boneless. Uh, they do take a few hours to cook, and they do come out very, very nice when they're done. You can serve them with either mashed potatoes, or polenta, or if you want to do like a buttered egg noodle, kind of like a uh, pot roast would be. Um, you can also shred them and make them barbecue style, or uh, even buffalo style. Um, and there's very different ways you can use this product. Um, you can take them, throw them on the barbecue, and then grill them that way as well. It's a little different uh, once they're fully cooked. So we're going to get them nice and dry. Let's stick to our pan. Then we're going to season them very well with salt and pepper. We're going to do a heavy seasoning here because it's the only time we can season throughout the process as we braise them. So we're going to sear them off to get some color on them first. And then from there we're going to go into a, uh, a pan and braise them for about three and a half, about three hours possibly. Thank you. A little bit of vegetable oil in the pan. Really hard to see her on it. This is a basic method for any kind of brace. You can do a lamb shank, veal shank, a sambuco, a pork shank. Uh, if you want to braise some chicken legs, uh, you still always want to sear it off first to get a nice color and caramelization on the outside. And from there, you're going to uh, add some uh, stock of your choice. Uh, we're going to show you one with today with how we do it. And then from there, you will um, uh, let it cook slow and low, uh, either in a container that is covered in the oven, or if you have like a Dutch oven, you can do it on top of the stove even. Or if you wanted to sous vide these, you could actually sous vide short ribs. Uh, the way we do them is 16 hours at 176 degrees, and when they come out and they're done, when you cut them, they look like they're medium rare to medium, but they are fully cooked all the way through and very tender. This helps keep the color that way. Starting to brown now, in a couple minutes. It does take a few minutes to get the caramelization. So for our sauce, we're going to use some butter. We have sliced garlic, sliced shallots. We're going to deglaze with some red wine and pork mix. We have some fresh herbs of uh, thyme and rosemary. This is a brown chicken stock. And then we have some really nice veal stock. You see how gelatinous it is. Uh, this is our veal stock we make in-house. And um, we start with about 100 pounds of veal bones and we make about uh, 15 gallons of stock when we're done, so it comes out really rich for our candy glass. So we're gonna use this to make our sauce, and then we'll be braised together. Now we got some nice color. As you can see, we have a really nice color going. We'll be able to flip over on the other side. You don't have to sear the bone side. I like to sear all the way around up. starting to smoke so lowering the heat just enough so we don't catch the pan on fire and have that uh, 
uh, burnt oil flavor to it. These are great, you can make them ahead of time. It's actually better to make them that way as well. So you make them uh, either the night before, or you can make a couple days before, depending on when you're gonna have them. And then when they come out of the oven, you uncover them, and you let them sit right in the, uh, the uh, broth that you use or to um, cool in, and they'll actually absorb some of that back in, and they get really, really nice and flavorful. So when you wanna heat them up, I would take them out, and heat it up nice and slow, either in a pan or a pot, a little bit of liquid. Then you take the liquid itself, and you take that put it in your pan and push it down so it's almost like a uh, serious, syrupy consistency. And uh, if it doesn't get all the way down, you just want to get thick a little bit of uh, cornstarch um, to get a nice, beautiful sheen. And the butter actually keeps it nice and uh, glossy as well. Okay, so we have a nice caramelization all the way around. Pan. We're going to remove all the oil right now. At this point, I'm going to add my garlic, my shallots. Traditional way would also be with celery, carrots, onions, if you use that. Um, some people like to puree it into the uh, sauce at the end, it makes it really thick that way. Um, make it more like a pot roast. This is a different way we, how we do them here, and it comes out really well. It's a great comfort food for those really cold days during the winter time when it's uh, raw, and windy, and cold out, and rainy. But you know, a nice short rib and you know it just warms you up inside, makes you feel good. And a nice glass of wine when it doesn't hurt either, so you always pick your favorite variety of red. So we're getting a nice starting to caramelize, it's sweating down real nice. Softening up real good. We're adding our herbs in. This helps release our oils from here and popping. Really adds some nice flavor and aromatics to our uh, short ribs. You can really smell the herbs and the garlic and the onions together really nice. Now we're at our pork. This you want to reduce down by least half. You see the pork burning off. Burn off the alcohol, it's got that bitter flavor to it. Well, you can make it any way you'd like. If you want to almost braise it with tomato sauce, you can make it like you're making a Sunday gravy or a Sunday sauce, they would say. Um, you can use tomato broth. If you want to give it an Asian uh, flair, you can do the same kind of method and throw in some, let's say, lemongrass, some ginger, maybe some lime zest, and give it a nice uh, Thai uh, Asian feel to it. You can go with the soy. Uh, if you want to do a Spanish flavor, you can always add cilantro, coriander, uh, some cumin seeds. Give it the flattened uh, flare that way. Okay, so now we have reduced down. We'll add our chicken stock. And 
our heel stock. Crank up the heel a little bit. We're going to melt this down. Get everything hot. And we're going to pour it right over our, our uh, short ribs when it breaks nicely. You see, it's very, very gelatinous. If you use the straight veal stock, or like a straight beef stock, it's very, very rich and it'll actually take away from the flavor to short ribs uh, because you won't have uh, your flavor palate won't feel the flavor of the short rib with the too much grease, too fatty. Okay, the veal stock is melted. We got it pretty warm here. We're good to go. We'll take everything, pour it right into our pan here. You can see everything's covered. Paper, and we're going to fold it to match. This helps keep the moisture and the liquid in. That way, it doesn't escape through the foil in case you were to rip the foil, or if you're checking it, you won't. Uh... There we go there, and that's short. Short, we're going to parchment paper, put our foil on there. I like to fold the one end, and what I'll do is I'll fold this end here. And then wrap it light on that side and wrap it real tight in the back. And then with having the extra fold, if you want to check them, you just peel it back here and you can open it up and it'll seal back up again. So I have the convection oven on. I have it set at 350 on the low fan setting and we'll see you in a couple hours. Okay, here we are. It's been a few hours. These weren't so thick, so we're about two and a half hours in. We're gonna give them a little check. So we'll pull the top piece off. We got our parchment paper. As you can see, you got a nice rich broth. We'll take that thermometer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull them out real fast. You wanna see how nice and soft they are. And I can tell you right now, they are perfect. are almost coming out. That's how it's nice and soft the are is one. Here's the second one right here. See the liquid's nice and rich. So what we're going to do is we're going to test them and see how easy the thermometer goes in. You can see they're very, very, very tender and actually the bones are starting to come off. And uh, that's really what you want to see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a plate. So what I'll do is I'm going to take some of the broth. I'm going to pour it into a pan. And we're going to make a reduction. And we'll make a full plate with some mashed potatoes. I have some nice buttery whipped potatoes and some vegetables. That's about all I need for one. Now again, if you make it the day before, you can actually keep it cool in here. You can reserve a little liquid on the side to make your sauce. But they come out really good the next day. The uh, liquid, uh, it's reabsorbed into the meat. Nice cold day like today, you really want to have uh, something to warm you up and warm up the size. We also have some baby veg, some broccoli, some baby carrots, a little butter. Give these guys a little warm up. It doesn't take long for the reduction. There's your sauce. So I want to take a moment and say thank you to everyone for supporting us this year. It's been a little uh, hectic for everybody, uh, not normal circumstances, and uh, we had a, a good year overall with the groceries, also the upstairs dining was a lot of fun. Um, some really beautiful nights up there, beautiful sunsets, and I hope everybody had a chance to enjoy it. And uh, we've been back inside now for a couple of months, and uh, let's hope it keeps going this way. And we all look forward, my staff and I, to seeing everybody uh, next season, and hopefully everything's great and back to normal by then. Thank you very much.
So at this point, you can either leave the bones in or you can take them out. And, you know, I'm gonna pull them all out of this one right here. You can see they come right off. Seasoning on just a little tiny bit of salt and pepper, just to crush them up a little bit. A little bit of seasoning right there. Season the sauce very lightly. If it becomes over riching, you could add a little bit of uh, white balsamic vinegar or even apple cider vinegar to cut through the fat a little bit. Sometimes it get really, really rich. Uh, all the bone marrow and the natural juices and all the fat that's inside the uh, short rib will make them very rich. So that way you can cut through the fat layer and really taste it very well. Sauce is almost ready. As you can see it's picking it up, it's getting a nice shine to it. Very, very close on that. The bag is nice and warm. We'll make our plate. A nice dollop with potatoes right here in the middle. Take our short rib at this point, put it right on top. You can see this is a very nice portion. These are actually one pound short ribs, so that's a nice portion right there. We'll take our sauce, as you can see it's nice and thick. It's got a beautiful sheen to it. You can see how it holds, holds on to the back of the spoon. So they would call that nappe, and you can go like this, and it holds its, its uh, streak across, so I know it's ready. So we'll actually sauce the short rib real nice. A couple of spoonfuls, about maybe two and a half to three ounces right here. And then we'll garnish with our vegetables. These are baby carrots. There you have it. A beautiful braised short rib. Thank you very much and have a great year. Bye.